Make Better Wealth Decisions, a podcast that explores how financial advisors' blind spots can harm your investments. I'm your host, John DeGuy, a portfolio manager with Design Securities in Toronto. In this podcast, we'll provide advice on how you can achieve better outcomes by maximizing investments and minimizing taxes. Let's put our thinking caps on as we consciously decide to get smarter about our money. Elder care is a very touchy subject anywhere you go around the world. We have more people getting old and people are living longer than ever before, and that's great. The problem, of course, is these people need care as they age, and a lot of them lose their capacity. So let's think about what we can do to make better wealth decisions regarding elder care. I don't think there's a subject in the whole realm of personal finance that is oftentimes more misunderstood and more delicate than the care of loved ones who are at the end of their lives, who have done so much for children and grandchildren, but who nonetheless need to be looked after. And that can be a very, very emotional concern. When making better wealth decisions, perhaps the most important thing is that you need to be transparent, you need to be realistic, and you need to be evidence-based. If your parent or grandparent is at the point where they are no longer able to care for themselves, someone has to step in to find a way to bridge the gap to help them live out their autumn years with dignity and hopefully with some self-respect. So be open. This is perhaps the most difficult conversation you will have with an extended family. But the thing you should probably do is have a family meeting. Get everyone in the same room at the same time, talking about what their goals are and how they can solve a problem for, let's say, a grandmother who is 88 years old and living on her own, but no longer able to live on her own because she can't prepare meals and is having trouble with an incontinence and perhaps with the memory loss and other cognitive issues, she's obviously going to have some sort of a, a fix put in. Now, there are two ways you can do this. You can solve the problem internally or externally. You can have them have her maybe stay at home if she's well enough and have someone check in on her every day or have a PSW come in on a regular basis. Or uh, if that's not possible, you'll have to move grandma to a, a home and have someone look after her. And there's some considerations there. Think about, at this family meeting, think about what you want for your loved one, what your loved one can afford, and if your loved one is staying home, who will be providing the care? What does that look like? What are the expectations? And will there be some sort of financial consideration for, let's say, the youngest daughter, who's uh, the youngest of three children, it's a daughter, and she's living nearby, so she's going to take care. Does that mean there might not be a consideration in a final will so that she might be getting a bit more than her siblings in order to take care of the fact that she's doing more while mom is alive and the other children are not doing as much? So maybe the assets should be split 40, 30, 30 instead of one third, one third, one third or whatever. But is there a consideration being made? And I'm not saying it should or it shouldn't. I'm saying there should be a conversation with everyone in the room to make sure everyone's on the same page. To that end, there should also be powers of attorney in place. Anyone who, and in fact, this is true for anyone who's an adult, should have two powers of attorney, one for property and one for personal care. This is absolutely critical for elderly people who might be slipping in and out of consciousness, who might uh, have leave of their senses and what have you. It's absolutely vital that the caregivers, in this case, the doctors, know who to talk to with regard to their property, their home, their investments, but also with regard to personal care. And that includes something as extremely personal and delicate as a DNR, a do not resuscitate, a so-called living will. If uh, the person you love is on life support, should you continue to keep that person on life support or not? All in all, making decisions about elder care is extremely personal and it's extremely delicate. It is vital that you have a full a complete and honest conversation with the family members affected so that you can do what's right for the people you love. John DeGuy is a portfolio manager with Design Securities in Toronto. The views expressed in this program are not to be construed as specific advice. It is recommended that you consult a qualified advisor before taking action. 
His books, The Professional Financial Advisor 4, Stand Up to the Financial Services Industry and Bullshift are available through Amazon and in bookstores throughout Canada. You can reach John at 647-STAND-UP. That's 647-782-6387 or at jdegui at designedsecurities.ca.